I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series with Aryan, a grade 8 student doing grade 11 mathematics in USA. In this particular video, we will discuss questions related to the bearing angle. Now in trigonometry, you understand what is sine law, what is cosine law, and you must have done many applications. However, the most tricky of these are the ones which involve bearing angle. We are going to look into those. I hope this video will help you get the concepts and solve similar questions without any difficulty. So watch the video and enjoy. Hi Aryan, how are you doing? Yeah, hi, I'm doing good. How are you? Very good, very good. So today, what do you want to learn? Um, I want to finish up um, bearing problems and trigonometry identities. Sure. So let's do that. Okay. So do you have some questions to share with? Yes, um, they're in the folder. I'm opening it right now. Okay, that's fine. Share which file? Yeah. So you have to scroll all the way to the bottom. Bottom. Yeah. It's yeah. Yeah. M three unit four D seven and eight. This one. Okay. Yeah, that one. Yeah, and then all the way down. All the way down. The, the, yeah, the worksheet after this. Yeah, I think you have to keep going. Oh, yeah. Oh, you got more. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah, questions two and three are the ones I want to. Perfect. Well, let's look into this. Let me. Did you try them? Yeah, I tried them and I was a little bit confused with questions. So you want question number two, which is six cos. Let me write bigger, right? Six yeah. cos theta. And then within brackets, we have one over cos theta. Nine cotangent theta over cosecant theta. Yeah. And you want that to be equal to six sine squared. So number six remains. Okay. Yeah. Sine squared theta. Perfect. So six is there. Yes. Obviously, we'll begin with the left hand side, right? Yeah. <laughs> because we can simplify the left hand side, which basically is six times cos theta. Since you want sine square theta on the right hand side, it's good to write everything in sine and cosine, right? Yeah. So, uh, let me just write one over cos theta. I know that will cancel. That's a good thing. Cotangent yeah. is what? Cotangent is cos over sine, right? Yeah. So we we'll write cos theta over sine theta times cosecant theta is 1 over sine theta. Is that clear to you? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it is better to write fraction in the way I have shown you. Right? Okay. You write layers of fractions, correct? Yeah, yeah. Now we can open the bracket. 6 outside. I'm not disturbing 6 at all because we have 6 on the right hand side also. So cos theta times 1 over cos theta gives me 1. And here we, yeah. here we can definitely cancel this and we get 1 minus cos square theta. Do you see that? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And 6 times that is sine square theta since 1 minus cos square theta is sine square theta. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, that's important. Yeah, I think my problem for these type of like trigonometry entities is that I just like overthink it for a couple you of know, problems. Yeah, very simple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, these are the starters for you. Get my point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's going to get this even harder and harder. Yeah, yeah. So, which is the next question? Yeah. Yeah, blank schema. Tell me what what equation you're looking for. Tell me the equation. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. If yeah, it's x is equal to five sine t. Yeah. And y is equal to four cos cosine t. So, like, my my question is just, like, how do you, like, sketch the curve? How do you sketch the curve? Okay, that's fine. So, we have given set x and y values. And since from our past experience, we have learned, since the values are 5 and 4, it is, an, it is not a circle, right? They are different values. It is an ellipse, correct? Now, to sketch this, we will take some values for t. So let us say... You you work in radius or in degrees? Um, 
We work in both, but I we I I personally prefer degrees. You personally prefer degrees. No problem. Yeah. So basically, we need to get set of points so that we could sketch them. That is the whole idea, right? So I'll I'll graph it later, but let us first see how do we get this. Your I think your question is how do we get the set of points, right? Yeah, that's my question. That's your question, right? So okay, let's see how do we get this sketch of um, set of points. Okay. Yeah. So so what we will do here is I'll make a table. Yeah. No problem. Now we'll take some values for t. So. Let us say you want to work in degrees. So let's say we take t as zero. We take t as good values to take as 30, 60, 45, 90. Is that okay? Yeah. 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 So in degrees, we will take 30 degrees, 60 degrees, 45 degrees. I should have written 45 first. Okay. Let me just read it. Yeah. Because when I was trying to solve, like, when I was trying to graph it and, like, get the points, like, I didn't exactly know what points to take because, like, I, 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 I first started taking like one, two, and three, and then like the oh, values. Were just, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then like I, and then my calculator wasn't in like the right thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, right. That is just, too many degrees. <laughs> yeah, it's just it was just like a little like different. Got it. So we have x equals to five times sine t, one column, and y equals to four times cos t. Is it okay? Yeah. Well, you can also use special triangles. There's no harm in making one, especially 30, 60, 90, right? So if this is a 60 degrees, we know the sides are 1, 2, square root 3. And 45 degrees, you know, square root 2, right? Yeah. Let me just make one. So it's a good idea to make these triangles. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. So... When we say, let's begin with zero, and we do one side. We know sine and cosine have symmetry, right? Yeah. We know cosine is even. This is an even function, correct? Yeah, yeah. And this is an odd function. So we will take advantage of symmetry. We can do one side. OK. Yeah. So for zero, sine is zero, we know. And cos is one. So we get the values four here. Is it OK? Just yeah. plug it yeah. in. Similarly, for 90, we know ninety for ninety sine is one, so there you get five and cos is zero. You get zero, right? So we have done these two. Now yeah. let's get into the thirty sixty triangle. Yeah. Thirty degrees sine of thirty degrees. Looking from this side is half. So sine thirty is half. So you get this value x as five by two. Two point five that is, and for cosine. 30 degrees is square root 3 over 2. So you get yeah. square root 3 over 2, two. times 4. Is it okay? Which is 2 square. Yeah. Now, for 60 degrees, the, the cosine value, sine value will be square root 3 over 2. So this will be square root 3 over 2 times 5 in this case. And as far as cos is concerned, it will be half of Four, right? So four times half, which will be two. Is it okay? Yeah. For forty-five degrees, it is one over square root two, which you can see here. So five over square root two. I'm just inserting here for sine, and for cos, it is four over square root two. Is it okay? I'm just yeah. Inserting. Now that's one side done, right? Now, because you know, uh, if you look into the sine and cosine graph, cosine graph is let me just uh, do you see yeah. the symmetry, right? Even symmetry. Yeah, yeah. So these values are also positive and exactly same. So I can just repeat these values here. For 30 and minus 30, it is one is the same thing. So I okay. can write this as 2 square root 3. Two and this is 4 square root 2. And that is 2. And this is 0. Is it okay? Yeah. However, for sine, it is negative. So it is odd symmetry, and therefore, for 30 will be minus 5 over 2, minus 5 over square root 2, and that will be 5 minus 5 square root 3 over 2, and this will be negative 5. Is it okay? So yeah. Plot these values. Now, once you get these values, you can plot them on the graph itself. So, at x equals to 0, 
you at, at t equals to zero, we get the point zero and four. Do you see that? Zero and four will be this, correct? Yeah. Well, we will extend these values to uh, 180, 90. I mean, mm -hmm. we can extend yeah. this, right? So we'll make one half of it, correct? So, yeah. and then as you can see, uh, the next value is five by two will give you two by three, and then zero comes at five. The last value here is five. So if this is four, so this zero comes at five. Do you see that? Yeah. And if you connect these points, these points will be kind of like this. Is it okay? Yeah. Right. Now, you can always say that the X function is odd symmetry and this is even symmetry. Well, you can extend this table. When you do that, you will get this, uh, the other half. I mean, you understand. We already have the top part. We already have uh, for my minus values, right? We already have one half of it. That means these values yeah. will give us this this half for sure, correct? Yeah. Right? And now we ref because if you go further, because of the symmetry, we get these that half also, correct? Yeah. So now you get your major axis, the value of A is five, right? So this is minus five, this is minus four. And that is how you'll sketch your ellipse. Is it okay? With very precise points as we calculated. So this is uh, the, you can say this is X and that is Y. And you're putting X in degrees, correct? Yeah. So that is the process of sketching your parametric equations. Yeah. Yeah. This so I yeah, because I was able to sketch the ellipse, but like the points was just a little weird. Hmm. Yeah. So yeah, thank you. Because now actually like yeah. Perfect. And if, if you are using radius, it'll be zero multiples of pi by two, pi by four, all those things, correct? Yeah. Okay, so let me raise. Any other questions for you? Yeah, so um, there should be a file in, um, it should, let's see, it should be called. Okay, I'll, I'll share that. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just scrolling through as well to try and find it. Okay. We'll get into that. Uh, tell me from here, we got all the files here, which you wanted. Yeah, which yeah, so. Can you, can you scroll up a little bit? Oh, actually, no, it's right there. Sorry, it's right there. Which one? Yeah, it's the um, law of sines and cosines word problems. Okay, law of sines and cosines. U4. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Let's look into this file. Which question do you want? Should we start from the very first one? Like, how do you want to go about it? How many have, have you done? Yeah. Yeah, I've done most of them. There's just this one problem which I'm a little like okay, confused. Uh, which one? Which yeah. one? Yeah, it is uh, question four. Yeah. Four? Okay. That's fine. Can you please read question number four? Yeah. Hmm. Three boats. Okay, no, sorry. This is not the question. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, sorry. This is not the question. Uh -uh. Not the question. Yeah. yeah, can you keep scrolling down? Oh, sure. Yeah, it's it's question seven. Yeah, question seven. No problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, can you please read the question? Yeah. Flights 104 and 217 are both approaching O'Hare International Airport from directions directly opposite from one another and at an altitude of 2.5 miles. Okay. The pilot on flight 104 reports an angle of depression of 17 degrees... Yeah, this, that's, the, that's the thing I didn't understand. Like, it says 47 seven minutes. 47 minutes. So, okay. 60 minutes in a degree, okay? Yeah, yeah okay. So, 17 degrees, at 47 minutes to the tower, and the pilot on the flight 217 reports an angle of depression of 12 degrees in 39 minutes to the tower. Calculate the distance between the plates. Okay. So, basically, you clearly did not understand the question and the terminology, right? So let's try to understand that. So there are two planes which are coming in, both approaching from opposite directions. So where should I? Let me sketch it here itself. Right? So these are the two planes. Let's say one is here, the other one is right here. So 
So we'll call them plane A and B. Okay. So A is 104 for me. They're approaching the airport from directions directly opposite to one another, and they are at the altitude of 2.5 miles. So let's say this is the somewhere. Okay, so this height is 2.5 miles. Yeah, okay. From the ground. Okay, now, the pilot of flight 104 reports an angle of depression of something to the tower, right? So let's say 17.47. Let me just draw the angle of depression. Angle of depression is always from the horizontal. So yeah. We assume that they are coming on a horizontal height, which is, of course, the case. Same height means that. So this angle is 17 point, 17 degrees and 47 minutes. Is it okay? Okay. So yeah. If you want, let me write down here, 17 degrees, 47 minutes. So that means 17 degrees and this is 47 means 47 over 60 minutes. Do you understand? Okay. That? Yeah. Because it's the time. So if you do like that, so the, it gets into degree. You see that? So the calculation, you should use this value for degree. Yeah. Now, the pilot on this reports an angle of depression of 1239. So this angle here is. 12. Uh, let me write degrees and minutes for now. Okay. Calculate the distance between them. So we want to find A, B. So how will you do it? So this angle, basically, you can find the central angle. Also, you know the height. Okay. Height is 2.5. Okay? Yeah. 2.5. Now... Yeah. You can see very clearly from here, this angle is same as that angle. These two angle of depression and elevation are same. Same, yeah. And we have this height of 2.5, right? So let's say this point is uh, some tower T. So T to B dash, which is, and this is A dash, the image of that, right, vertically. So what is TB equals to? T to B. Uh, sine of. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, sorry. Tangent. You have to yeah. find TB, right? Yeah. You can so, actually use one of these uh, relations because tan theta, right? Yeah. You can say 2.5. We'll write like this. 2.5 over T to B is tan of the angle 12 degrees 39 minutes. Is that okay? Yeah. But... 12 degrees 39, first use calculator, convert this angle to decimal value. Is that okay? Do that. Okay. So similarly, 1239 will be 39 over 60 minutes. All everything now begins to do. Yeah. So, so T to B is basically 2.5 divided by tan of that angle. How much is this angle? Yeah. So yeah, so that the twelve plus thirty-nine over sixty is um twelve point six five as a decimal. Use this value. Is it okay? Use yeah, yeah, yeah. Ten of twelve point six five degrees. Calculate TV. Use calculate. Two point five divided by ten of twelve point six five. Yeah. What do you get? Yeah. Uh, one hundred and eleven point three nine. Oh, oh, sorry, no, that's wrong. I put twenty five instead of two point nine. I mean two point five. Do it again. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah. It's eleven point one 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 four. Yeah, eleven point one four. Okay, so we got T two B now. We can simply find T to A, right? Which will be, let me write down here. T A is equal to uh, 2.5 divided by tan of that angle. Calculate this. 17 degrees plus 47 over 60 is how many degrees? Yeah, it is 17.8 degrees. 17.78. Okay, use 17.78. 
in your calculations. And tell me what is TA. We'll add them up. Okay, yeah. 5 divided by tangent of 17.78. 8.19. Great. So you could have also made a triangle like this. I could have drawn a vertical line here. And you see this right angle triangle? And yeah. Calling this point as some point P. We can find these. But anyway, these are same sides. Okay. So add them, both of them, and get your answer. So A to B, the distance between them is definitely 8.19 plus 11.14. Is it okay? That's your answer. Okay. Is that clear to you? Everything yeah, is fine. So this is relatively simple. You have a right triangle to work with. Correct? The only thing is, yes, how do we convert how degrees and minutes? How do we combine them? That's the tricky part. Okay, let me clear this. Okay. Any other question? Yeah, so I don't really have any specific any more questions to ask. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to like go over like reference and coterminal angles. Reference and coterminal angles. Okay, so uh, I can give you many examples based on that. We'll just take, uh, we'll just work with some examples. We'll get yeah. some values. It doesn't matter. So let me like, just share with yeah. you the whiteboard. Okay. Yeah. So, see, simple. Let's we'll start with very simple example. Let us say if I have sine theta equals to, let's take a value as uh, 0 0.25. Is it okay? Yeah. So what is theta equals to? We want theta to be within the domain of 0 to 0 degrees to 360 degrees. Is that clear to you? Less than yeah. That means one full cycle, correct? So tell me what value of theta do you get? Theta equals to how much? Yeah. You get 14.48. Okay, so we'll approximate this to 14.5 degrees. Yeah. Is that all or do we have another answer? Yeah. Calculator yeah. is not going to give you. See, that's the problem. Yeah. We use the cost rule. So we know we are looking for a positive value. That means we expect the answer in quadrant one and in quadrant two. Correct? So what we do here is that we find first the related acute angle. So we are saying, well, in quadrant one, it is possible. We'll just say, we'll say, what is sine alpha equals to 0 0.25? We can say alpha or beta, right? And yeah. alpha equals to sine inverse of 0 0.25. And we say this value is 14.5, let us say. So okay. we mean that we got this angle as 14.5. This is called related acute angle yeah always the related acute angle is with the horizontal it is from yeah. horizontal so the reference is from horizontal is that okay okay and it is always treated as positive it is always treated as positive so we have 14.5 now, since we know that sine is also positive in quadrant two, therefore, we have another solution, which will be here, correct? And this angle will be 180 minus 14.5, the related acute angle, correct? 16.5. Yeah. So the other, so now we write value of theta as 14.5, since it is positive, acute angle is the solution. And the other one is, 180 degrees minus 14.5. So the answer is 14.5. And what did you say? What? Uh, no, no I, you I, you wrote 16.5 six, over there instead of 14.5. Okay, it looks like. Okay, 14.5. Take it as 14.5. Okay. 180 <laughs> minus 14.5 is what? Yeah, it looks like. Yeah. Yeah, 165.5. 165.5 degrees. Is that clear to you? So, yeah. really simple question. Now let's move forward with slightly more difficult. So I'll just make this as now sine sine theta equals to minus of let's say take some value. Is that it? Obviously less than one. So 0 0.75. Okay. So now how will you find? Now this is negative. 
if you use calculator, what answer do you get? Tell me. Yeah. We want to do within the domain of 0 to 2. To, let me write yeah. this. Degrees. Yes. Yeah, you get negative 48.6. That is not in our domain, correct? So, calculator yeah. will keep giving you that wrong answer. So, it doesn't really yeah. work. That is what I wanted to tell you. So, what we do here is we say, well, let's find the related acute angle alpha. Some books use beta. So, sine alpha equals to 0 0.75 because my acute angle will be in quadrant 1. In quadrant 1, all the trigonometric ratios are positive. So, now you tell me what is alpha equals to? Yeah. How much you get? Yeah. 48.6, right? Yeah. <laughs> that makes sense because this is okay. So we get this angle 48.6. Since we are looking for negative value of sine and we know the cost rule, correct? Sine is negative in which quadrants? It is negative in quadrant three and four. And therefore our solution should be what? It will be these angles, right? The related acute angle, 48, of course, but in these quadrants. So the answer is one is this answer, and yeah. the other one is this. Is it okay? Yeah. So one we have as 180 plus 48.6 degrees. The other one is 360 minus, degrees minus 48.6 degrees. It doesn't make sense to you. So we yeah. get both the values of theta, right? So when you do this calculation, you get both your answers. Is that clear to you? Yeah. So now let me take, and it makes sense because as you know, the sine graph is kind of like this, correct? Yeah. So if I am saying that my value is minus 0 0.75, that means, let me just uh, sketch the graph. Uh, I mean, okay, let me just uh, make the axis here. If I'm saying minus 0 0.75, I'm basically looking for these two points, do you see that? Yeah. So these two points are in quadrant three and four, correct? If you split this, look, see, appreciate this graph. It is four quadrants, correct? Yeah. Quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four. So those two values are in quadrant three and four, correct? Which we just found. Okay. So the five critical values of sine, which you always use, are origin and then on the axis. Yeah. Is that clear? Yeah. Perfect. Now, let me just uh, take example to the next level. So now what I'll do is, I'll say, let me say tan 2 theta, okay? Tan 2 theta equals to, now tan can have any value, right? Doesn't yeah, have any value. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Say five. Tan 2 theta is 5. Okay, let me make it negative 5. Means, if you use the calculator, and I want within the domain 0 to 360 degrees, okay? Yeah. Use calculator, tell me the answer. What do you get? Um, so, we'll say, we'll say tan of Alpha equals to minus five. Do you get the idea? Not minus yeah. positive. You're, yeah, Always you're positive. Money there. So alpha is equals to tan inverse of five. What do you get? Yeah. 78.7. 78.7 degrees. We have one related acute angle. Now, see, there's one very important thing which we will understand from here. We are saying this is the domain of theta. We are saying that theta is between 0 degrees to 360 degrees, correct? Yeah. So 2 theta will be between how? what degrees? Between 720 yeah, degrees. 720. Yeah. Well, first thing. Second, we know the cost rule. So tan, we are looking for a negative value. That means we are expecting solution in which quadrants? We are expecting solutions in quadrant in, in, three, S. two and these two, two and, quadrants, correct? Yeah. These two quadrants. And definitely, our answers will be one, right? Yeah. 
and then this, correct? So we are adding 180 to our answers. Do you see that? Next time, full yeah. circle, right? Full circle. Because we are yeah, going to 720, circle. correct? Yeah, 720. So what is this first angle? First angle is 180 minus 70. Yeah. Minus 7, correct? Yeah. So we have 180 degrees minus 78.7 degrees. The next one is 360 degrees minus 78.7 degrees, correct? Yeah. Then we have to add 360 to these two answers. Okay, find out yeah. what you get. Now, these are the values of 2 theta. Remember that part. Yeah. yeah. Then we also so, 2 theta yeah, so for, these angles. Yeah. So, for 180 minus 78.7, it is 461.3. No, no, no. 180 minus 78.7 is on. Yeah, oh, no. I added the 360 to it. Oh, the uh, next one. Okay, okay. How much you get? No. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Sorry. I was looking at the wrong thing. Yeah. Okay, we'll start from the oh. beginning. Don't worry. Don't worry. Yeah. We'll it's 680 minus 78.7. We'll do that. That's just 101.3. Um, huh? That's 101.3. 101.3. Next one, tell me. Yeah, that is 281.3. And then we add the 360. Yeah, correct. So you will notice when you are working in tan, these are addition of 180, 180, 180, because the period of tan is 180. Yeah. So you can keep on adding 180 till you are going to 720, correct? So add 180 to 104. What do you get? Oh, 281, 281.3. What do you get? Yeah, you get 641.3. No, no. That is next. First, second, third value. One, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 180 plus 281.3. Yeah, 461.3. I keep looking at the wrong value. Yeah, you calculated everything very fast, right? And the yeah. one is 600 what? Then, then it's six hundred forty-one point three. Okay, so basically with tan, you just keep on adding one eighty to your answer, right? You get all of them. This is two yeah. theta. So what is theta equals to? I have to divide them all by two. Do you see that? Yeah. Divide them by two. Write down your answer. So the first one, how much do you get? Yeah, you get. So the first one, you get um. 50.65. Yeah. Then? And then you get 140.65. Yeah. Add 90 degrees. Yeah, that's correct. Then? And then for, and then you get 230.65. Get it. Then? Add and then 315.65. 9 plus 3 is 12. 320. Yeah. 90. So... Because tan 2 theta will have a period of 90 degrees. Tan theta has a period of 180 degrees, correct? So you were adding 180. But now 2 theta has a period. It is horizontally compressed by a factor of half. And therefore, yeah. the period is 90. So you see each value is increasing by 90 degrees. And those are your final answers. Did you understand this process? Yeah. So that is how you should be uh, using the related acute angle and the co-terminal angles to find your answers. Is it okay? Yeah. Now, trigonometric equations could be more complicated than this. So we could have an equation where we may have to solve an identity and then work on it. So for okay. example, you could have like two sine x plus yeah. Let us say cos x. I'll keep it simple for now. 2 cos yeah. x, 2 sin x cos x uh, is equal to, let us say, 0, right? So we have this trigonometric equation. How do I solve it? Correct. So, well, we can write this, take one thing on the other side. We say cos x equals to 2 sin x, correct? And then divide by sine on both the sides or by cos on both the sides. So we get... Yeah. 2 sin x over cos x. Oh, yeah, you can do it like that. 2 sin x over oh, cos x, right? Cos x, yeah. So we get 1 equals to 2 tan x, correct? Yeah. Oh, that means tan x is half, right? Yeah. 
So we may have to solve the equation a bit to get to that result. But then ultimately we have to use the same principle. That same, is yeah. same method, right? Find the related acute angle alpha, right? And then the other angle will be on the other side, which will be 2 yeah. pi, oh, I mean to say 180 plus that angle. So you get the angle. Is that, a, is that okay? Yeah, yeah. You might yeah. have quadratic equations also, and then you may have to solve those into, uh, and then get the answer, correct? Okay. Yeah. yeah. I can share with you uh, some of my videos on this. That could help. Okay. okay. Yeah, that, that, that'll be good. Yeah. That'll be good, right? So let me yeah. use the whiteboard. I'll try opening it. Yeah, I can, I'll, I can maybe open it up instead. Okay, no problem. Okay, you, you open it. Yeah. Stop sharing. Okay. So just type in Anil Kumar trigonometric equation playlist. Yeah. And share the screen. Yeah. So we may have linear, we may have quadratic yeah. equations, so we may have combination of many different. Okay, so we'll take linear trigonometric equations for now. Is that okay? okay. Click this yeah. 53 videos. But you will get all variety uh, there in the channel. So these are simple okay. ones which we just did, right? Yeah. So in the playlist, now if it is 2 sine square x equals to 1, for example, so in yeah. that case, what will happen? What is sine x equals to? Zero. No, half square root oh. plus minus, correct? Oh, oh, oh. You're answering the first one. I'm answering, yeah, uh, yeah, I was in the first one. Yeah, yeah. First one is zero. So whenever it is zero, you know, sine is zero within zero to two pi, it will be at zero, it will be at pi and two pi, correct? Yeah. General solution also sometimes we give. Sometimes we give general solution. Do you know how to write general solution for it? No, we, we didn't go over that actually. Okay. So you could write n times pi. So all multiples of pi, or you can say n times 180. Okay. All multiples of 180 will give you sine zero, correct? Yeah. Okay, we can look into some other questions. Okay. That could be good for you. Let's see the list. Yeah. Uh, playlist, right? So, yeah. okay. Let's take the factored form, which is uh, the uh, yeah, the last one, fifth fifth question. Oh, the, the, the fifth one? Okay. Yeah. So, when you have an equation like this, you can divide 1 by 2, you get half, and then solve the equation. Cos x will be 1 half minus 1, so minus half, and then do the same thing which we did earlier, correct? Yeah. Okay. So now let's look into different kind of questions. Type out Anil Kumar. Yeah. Quadratic trigonometric equation. So we'll, we may have factors to solve. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. So click the very first one. Let's see the first one. Doesn't matter. So okay. Let's see the question. So here we have cos square x equals to sine square x plus sine x. You see that trigonometric equation, which is quadratic form? Yeah. We would like to have this equation only in one trigonometric ratio. So yes. we could write cos square x as 1 minus sine square x, correct? Yeah. And bring them together and then factor. So just go to the middle part of this particular video so that we'll see the factored form of the equation. So you can see the steps. Do you see the steps? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see them. We wrote cos square x as 1 minus sine square x and brought all the terms to one side. And as you can very clearly see that we have 2 sine square x plus 2 sine x minus 1. I mean, 2 sine square x minus, minus, sine x minus, minus. minus 1. Now use your factoring techniques. We're looking for product of minus two and sum of one. And the numbers which work are plus two and one, correct? So we we have made, we have added this sine x, right? Plus we have split this sine x as two sine x minus sine x. And then we have factored as shown. Is this part clear to you? Yeah, yeah, I get this part. So zero is equals to two factors. Obviously, the two factors should be zero to get a, get a zero. 
So yeah. if you equate each to zero, so we have sine x plus one equals to zero. That gives you some solutions. And two sine x minus one also equal to zero will give you sine x equals to half. Okay. Right? Yeah. And then for each, you find the value within yeah. zero to two pi in this case, and you can work in degrees also. So we can have quadratic uh, trigonometric equations also to solve. Is that clear? Okay. Yeah. Perfect. So uh, just type out again trigonometric equations. Anil Kumar will just see some uh, other video. I like to show you some video which will have many examples in it. Okay. Okay. So go down the list. So we have thousands of examples actually. Uh, yeah. So we have this twenty-minute video, which is uh, pre-calculus. Yeah, general solution. You okay. have not done general solution so far, but yeah, we can have a peep into this general solution also. Okay. Uh, sine waves are periodic waves, correct? So when I say sine x is half, it could be half at many places, correct? Yeah. So that is how we see that we have many multiple uh, answers. We could use general terms, for example, n, where n is any integer, to write down a solution. We'll see how do we write it for these periodic functions. Go to the middle part of it. We'll see yeah. some examples in between, right? Okay. So as you can see, what I have done here is the first example: cos x is equals to one over square root two. We know what value of cos x gives you one over square root two. It is pi by four or forty five degrees, correct? Yeah. So one over two for cos that forty five degrees or three sixty minus forty five that will also give you the same answer, correct? Yeah. Yeah. And as yeah. you can see, the cosine curve has been drawn right on the top. A horizontal yeah. line, yeah. which is one over square root two, will cross the line at many points. So we have to write a general expression for all these points. The general expression is written on the right hand side, which is saying, well, pi by four is to be added to two and pi. You see that? Yeah, yeah. Rather plus minus pi by four because minus pi by four is also giving you one over square root two. One over square root two. Yeah. So two and pi, two and pi. 2 pi is the period, right? Or 360 yeah. is the period. Yeah, 360. Yeah. N multiples. 1, 2, 3, 4. N is the number. So n multiples of 360 for the same point will give you the coterminal angle and the answer. You get the idea. Yeah. So as shown here, 2 n pi plus pi by 4, where n belongs to integers. It could be plus minus 1, plus minus 2, plus minus 3, and so on. Perfect. So that is how you could actually also write general solution for a trigonometric equation. equation. Is it okay? okay. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. So let's search for more. Just uh, again, uh, yeah. Continue with this search, Anil Kumar, uh, trigonometric equation, and let's see. Yeah. Go down. I'll tell you which one to stop. So there are many. Go down. So I didn't go through some. Of, wait, yeah. Let's see. Yeah, go, go down, go down, go further, 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 further. further. There are some multiple choice questions also which have gone through. Okay, so go back. Yeah. Let's take this. Uh, go back. We'll take this one, which is thirty-five minutes video. Solve trigonometric equations. Eight practice examples for IB students. Now these questions are slightly more difficult. You get the idea. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, well, these are not for some of them are more difficult. Okay. So, correct. So we have sine and cosine. This is a very interesting uh, video. You should actually watch it because we have variety here. We have a linear equation, correct? To begin with, yeah. we also yeah. have quadratic equation, and we have combination with sine and tan and cos. So that becomes challenging. You know, pi is 180 degrees. 2 pi is 360 degrees. So the domain you can change to zero to three sixty degrees and answer these questions. So that could yeah. be your homework or practice questions. Is it okay? Yeah, yeah, I'll check them out. Check them out. So when you have a quadratic equation where sine and cosine are both there, 
look for which one is a square value. So that square could be written as one minus like one minus, square yeah. x is one minus sine square x. You have to get the equation in one variable in that case for quadratic yeah. equation. Right? Yeah. For linear, it <clears> doesn't matter because sine over cos is tan. So you can. Yeah. That. Is that okay? Yes. So just look for the squares and just simplify yeah. them. Yeah. yeah. That is kind of critical, right? And obviously, when we have tan, we have restriction because you know tan is dividing by cosine, right? So you cannot, whenever cos is zero, those are not valid. Yeah. Okay. So uh, is this solving trigonometric equations clear to you, Aryan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Any other questions for you? Yeah. So there, there are two bearing problems which okay. I would yeah. Sure. Share with Share. You. Yeah, it's called exam cell. We went over them yesterday, except these are this is like eight and ten. Okay, and we'll, we'll, I'll share the screen again and then we'll yeah. look into that because we got to like five and we didn't do the rest. So, okay. just, yeah, 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 we went just that's true. I just wanted to look at the other ones. We, we did some, but of course, uh, with the restriction of time, okay. yeah, bearing. Yeah, I can only see the white whiteboard for some reason. Hmm? I can only see the whiteboard. Oh, I didn't share that means. Oh, wait, wait. Yeah. Okay, so let me let me first click this, then I'll do the sharing part. Yeah, when you were sharing that, no, was, sharing. It. that was it. Now I think I, I can share. Yeah. There you see. This one you mean? This X, can you see the board now? Yeah. These are your questions, correct? Yeah. Which one you the want question, to do? Question eight and 10. Eight and 10, okay. Sure. Okay. Three oil platforms, Alpha, Gamma, and Delta, are situated in the North Sea, as shown in the diagram, okay. The distance between oil platforms are also shown in the diagram. So it's like a cosine log. If the bearing of delta from alpha is 125 degrees, let's write down. How do we get yeah. that? So you help me out in this so that I understand yeah. how much you have learned. Yeah. Uh, where are we? If the bearing of delta from delta from alpha, right? Is yeah. 125. So from Alpha means this angle is 125. Clear? Is this correct? Yeah. What is the bearing of gamma from alpha? So we have to find the bearing of gamma from alpha. That means from here, we have to find what is this direction. This yeah. is what we have to find. Is that clear to you? So first thing yeah. you should understand what you really need to find. Correct? Yeah, we need to find the angle. Yeah. So now, clearly, when we have this angle, as soon as we have this angle, these two are parallel sides. 180 minus 125 is how much? Tell me. Uh, 65. Oh, no, 55. Yeah. Okay. 55. Put 55 there. Whatever you can calculate, calculate. That is what I feel the first thing, correct? Well, yeah, I saw for the actual. are given these three angles. So good practice is to find this angle. Is it okay? Yeah, I, yeah, I actually found that yeah. angle. How much did you get? You used to sign law, right? Yeah, yeah. I got 56 for that angle. So angle gamma. So I'm writing 56. Okay. So I'll write this as 56. Perfect. So this is there, 56 is there. You have to find the other angle also because otherwise all these sides, we cannot help it now. We have to find the I angle. found the angle delta, the whole angle. Yeah, what is this angle? Yeah, the, that angle is um, 40 degrees. Pardon? Yeah, 40 degrees. Well, in that case, you know, this is one, the, the whole angle is 125, this is 40. So we know this is 125 minus 40. That will be our answer, correct? Yeah. 
So, so we know this answer is 85 degrees. So what is the bearing of gamma from alpha? 85, but you're right, 085 degrees. Is that clear to you? Yeah. Yeah. So that part is done. So do we have another part of it? Yeah, the last question, number 10. Okay, so let me switch this off. Number 10, let me clear it. Okay. Let's do this. Okay. I don't understand why it vanishes. Yeah, it's just a little weird. Leave it off. Okay, now 10. The diagram below shows the position of three radar stations, alpha, beta, and delta. The bearing of beta from alpha is bearing of beta from alpha is 0, 035 given to you, right? What else? We have to stop this today. The bearing, yeah, the bearing of beta from alpha is 35 degrees. And then calculate the bearing of delta from alpha. Yeah. Hmm. Like this. Calculate the bearing of delta from alpha. Right? So from alpha. So we have to find this one. You understand? What are we given? We are given bearing of beta. We, we know this angle. Is that okay? 35? We, we, we have to find yeah. that angle. That is what is required. Yeah. Correct. So basically, you need to find this angle to just add it up. So use cosine law, find that angle. I mean, this angle. Yeah. And then yeah. our angle theta will be 5 plus 0, 35. Use cosine law. Yeah. yeah. So theta phi will be equals to cos inverse of 50 square plus 80 square. Yeah. Minus 75 square over 2 times 50 times 80. Yeah. Calculate. Yeah. Uh, sixty-five point eight three. Good job. So good at calculating these angles, and now just add thirty-five degrees to it to get the angle. Do you understand? So bearing of delta from alpha will be zero thirty-five degrees plus what we got sixty-five point eight three. Correct. Add it. Yeah. Hundred point eight three. Is that clear to you? Yeah, yeah. So that is how you have to do these questions. So get this uh, bearing. You understand now from bearing? Always yeah. clockwise from north. Is it okay? That is what bearing angle is. Clockwise, yeah. Sorry. And the second concept is? The sum of these two is 180, right? So that helps you to calculate many things. Is that clear to you? Yes. Any other questions? Um, that's basically it. That's all the questions I wanted to ask you about. Very good. So that's good yeah. so i think you have understood all the concepts and you should be doing yeah, i'm feeling well. a lot better than i was a couple of days ago <laughs> these questions were shared by my student Ari. i hope you find them interesting and useful they actually cover the whole topic in a very beautiful way thanks to Ari for sharing all these questions and i hope many students worldwide will benefit from them. Thanks for your time and all the best.